Lame. Lame. <laughs> 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 That was a recording piece by me, Ethan Williams. It's terrible. Welcome to Stacked, everybody. Haha. <laughs> this is episode 15. I'm your host, Ethan, joined by Brandon up there, Chris over there, and today we got a very special guest. A woman. A woman. <laughs> woman. Not only a woman, a sound mixer, our friend. Tori McJunkin is here on the show. <laughs> Welcome, Tori. Hello, hello. Woman. Woman. So, Tori, you're one of the few people who's listened to the podcast live. Probably many times because you're Chris's roommate. And you can probably hear him through the walls. Yeah, I hear screaming sometimes. S- but, screaming, uh, crying, farting, shitting. It's It could be... It could be the recording, or it could just be how he lives. It's hard to tell. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Can relate. Chris, Chris is a lot like the red larva <laughs> in the Love Island movie. Afraid of his life every yes. single day and screaming. <laughs> uh, yes, but we're... Larva Island screaming contest. Oh, should we... All right, let's do that right now. All right, can here I'm gonna put in some uh, game show music. Welcome to the Larva Island scr- annual screaming contest. We will see who has the best red larva scream. Our first contestant, Brandon Winchester from Mesa, Arizona. Please step up to the mic. Ooh. Ah! <laughs> Th- that wasn't even audible on Discord. <laughs> Did you did you yeah. really scream? <laughs> I think you went too high pitched. Well, I'll well that'll be a little treat for me later on, I guess. <laughs> All right. We didn't hear a damn thing. And now for contestant number two, Tori, please step up to the mic and do your red larva scream. <clears throat> Okay, that cut out, but we heard the beginning of it. We heard the beginning of it, so. <laughs> and now, contestant number three, Chris Lee, please step up to the mic with your red Lara screen. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded more like uh, Tom from Tom and Jerry yeah, scream. Was... <laughs> <laughs> when his tail gets it bashed in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and you already heard my larva scream, but I'll do it again. No, that's good. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) All right, none of this more silly business. Let's get to the real show. Tori, today you have presented us with a topic. Do you want to fill us all in on what the topic is and how you came up with it? Yeah, sure. Um, so I figured you guys were having a little bit, a little bit too much fun on this podcast, so I thought we would just do a real downer for this one. <laughs> um, it's my entire personality as a filmmaker. We're doing a divorce films. <laughs> yes. Yep. Oh yeah. I, as uh, Tori cinematographer, I can attest that statement is very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything we've made together has been about divorce. I feel like I have some hot takes on what a good divorce movie is. Um, so we'll see what you guys have to say about what a good divorce movie should be. Okay. This is this is going to be interesting. To I hope you disagree with Brandon. I want to see some... No. <laughs> some anger. No. I want to see some anger. No. I want to see some fighting today. <laughs> Much but like divorces. We need to get heated, all right? Ethan's Listen. been he- pretty heated all week. <laughs> Why? What did I do? What did I do Twitter. this week? You've been heated on, on Twitter? Twitter? Yeah. What am I doing on Twitter? Really? You've been yelling at us all day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Brandon's been DMing me, boo-hoo, baby, little cry baby, go cry. And I was like, <laughs> what the, you've been bullying me on Twitter. No, <laughs> like I haven't. Being angry. I, I have haven't the right been... to be angry on Twitter because you're bullying me all the time. I'm not bullying you. Who yes. Did I Who bully is? You? I... When I was scared of little gray aliens, you're like, wah, cry baby, boo hoo. <laughs> Why are you can scared we talk, of aliens? Can we talk what? about that? Can yeah. we talk about that Twitter account? 
The I don't think we've ever talked about this. Ethan, Listen. why don't you introduce what this is? Okay. <laughs> so one night out of the blue, uh, I was chilling with my with my boys, uh, Harrison, uh, the the Jungle Boys, the Jungle Thick, the Monkey Time Boys. Shout out to the Monkey Time yet again. And we were just chilling, and all of a sudden I get these Twitter notifications that um, this little gray alien started following just me on Twitter. But now he's not not following just me; he's following all sorts of people. And it's just it's just uh, uh, someone just trying to prank me because uh, they know my greatest fear and they're sending me scary pictures of aliens saying that they're coming for me. And now it's like it's getting a little concerning because they're sending me pictures of my house and stuff like that and uh, almost sort of doxing me on Twitter.com. But lucky for them, I don't really care if th- that you do that. But <laughs> if it was well, someone it else, so I think certain it's a person <laughs> or an alien. I don't know. It could be an alien in their flying saucer, but I this is a this is a special call out to the alien on twitter.com. I swear to God, if you come to my house, I don't care if you're into it or not. I will slap your head. I, you will start feeling your brain moon around in your skull. I will slap that shit hard like a wet watermelon. The slap will be heard I across the country. I I really don't think you have to do that, Ethan. Mm-mm, my hand is ready. <laughs> I I spray my hand. I grease it up. Ethan, ah! Ethan, Ethan. What? Calm down, buddy. Listen. Come on. I don't fuck with gray aliens. <laughs> little gray men in little saucer spaceships? Fuck no, dude. Either well, I'm slapping that gray melon of theirs or I'm I'm out of there. I'm running, okay? Well, let me let me tell you. Uh he he was pretty upset when you blocked him. Well, yeah, deservedly so. <laughs> yeah. No. Because because guess what, Ethan? What? I am that little gray alien that's been stalking you on Twitter. <laughs> are you? De- are you? Are you serious? <laughs> we all no, knew, you're Ethan. Not. No, you're not. You are yes, not. Yes, he is. He is. What? We've all known for for a while. Are you dead ass? <laughs> it's been you. <laughs> <laughs> When I was talking to him, how are you doing that around my back? Oh my god! I feel so betrayed! What the fuck? Oh. Okay. Good game, Brandon. Good game. I. Man. What a, what an event! <laughs> Fucking! I was so certain it was not you. I went through with my roommates. We went. I went through every person I know. I'm like, no, it can't be Brandon. No, it can't be Chris. I was with Chris. No, it can't be this. We even went. I there was a moment I thought it was Tori. I was like, oh, could it be Tori? I was like, no, it can't be Tori. It was you. Oh my god. Well, I'll go into more detail yeah. later on how how everything's <laughs> transpired. I did I also ban it. <laughs> okay, all right. We no more gray alien talk. Let's let's talk about divorces now because I'm about to divorce <laughs> from Brandon. All right. No more aliens. Let's talk about divorce. Much better. <laughs> hey. No, I'm okay. I'll get into it later. Um. All right, so how do you work? How does how it works? I know how yes. it works. Let me tell you how it works. Do you want to write it down for us? Once a week, we we set a we set a topic, and we're like, "Hey, time to make a podcast." So we split up, and we're like, "What are three movies that fit this topic?" And then Chris is like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna pick the movie you're gonna pick." So Tori, don't pick that movie. So I didn't because I guess that he's gonna pick my movie. And then okay. we come back and we're like, oh, we're at Blockbuster now. And we play pretend because we're little babies. And we play pretend we're at Blockbuster. What? And we're like, let's pick the, the, the wee movies that we think are best for the topic. And we we'll pick the movie and we leave. Why does your baby sound sound like the <laughs> villain in um, <laughs> Rugrats Go to Paris? You sound like a French woman. All right. Uh, this, <laughs> this whole uh, episode's going to be Rugrats RP. I'll be... Uh, I'll be Chucky. I'll be. Tommy. I, I put um, Tommy. <laughs> All right, that was pretty nail on the head. Movie. 
I'll be probably I'll be, my favorite. The more there's divorced parents in uh, yeah, yeah Ch- like yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Chucky's parents. Yeah, no, his parents. Is he a child? Died. Yeah, he's his widow. mom. His, mom oh, his dad's widow. I mean, that's sort of a divorce, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, same thing, Ethan. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. So yeah, Tori, you hit the nail on the head. I don't know about that baby stuff, but this is this is a grown up show. Like we Wait. say, fuck and stuff like that. <laughs> Children are not allowed to listen to Stacked. I I've actually I went into the settings. I blocked them. I blocked them from listening to Stacked. This is a mature content. This is for film intellectuals, and that's why we're talking about divorce movies. So, all right, let's get into it. Let's get into the first film. <laughs> Tori. What a mess. What? <laughs> What a mess! What? <laughs> what a mess! All right. Created a baby mess. What a mess. Ew, stinky. <laughs> uh oh. All right, we're twelve minutes in. Tori, take us in to our our first divorce movie. All right. So, I thought let's start with a classic. If you tell someone let's talk about divorce movies, this is what they're gonna tell you to watch. Uh, it's from 1979, directed by Robert Benton. It's Kramer vs. Kramer. Okay, Kramer vs. Kramer. I think the only now, person who's seen this is Brandon. No. Hello? It won Best Picture. <laughs> oh, it did? Okay. Okay, Tori, I literally tell us watched about it Kramer today. Tori, tell us about Kramer Tell us about it. I watched it. it today. I cried a lot. It was really good. Um... And it's about uh, Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep, a very young Meryl Streep. Uh, She walks out on him, and the very first scene of the movie, it's like... It's like they show you this in visual storytelling. It's like such a classic scene. And Dustin Hoffman is left with his son. But he's all work and play. All work, no play. He doesn't know how to raise a son. And it's about figuring out... um, like parenthood it's about sexism in the workplace it's about sexism in divorce law um and it was just a emotional roller coaster for me earlier today and i think it's a very classic divorce film brandon uh (laughs) yeah i was like wait (laughs) um yeah kramer versus kramer very solid movie uh i went through all the best pictures over the past like two or three years and really like got them all taken through and one that really spoke to me though my parents aren't divorced is Kramer versus Kramer I think it's one of Meryl Streep's best performances that I've seen because on one level you you hate her because she left but on the other level you kind of like understand where she's coming from as this mother who never really got to do what she wanted to do and Justin Hoffman's a very, like, it's really lovely how he learns to be a father because he wasn't really a great father before the divorce. And then post or post divorce, it just, he just learned. And there's a beauty in that and like connecting with your, your son. And then when it goes the other direction, it's just this emotional clash that you're not expecting. Cause like they really do leave it like open for like the first hour. And then that second hour hits and you're like, damn, this is a really good movie. Uh, I, there isn't, there isn't much to say about it just because it is like the quintessential divorce movie. It's like the first one there is like that I can think of anyway, but it's very good. Tori, was this your first time seeing it? Yeah, literally earlier. I was like, okay, this is probably going to be on my stack if I watch it. So I made sure to watch it before we started rolling. Okay. Yeah. I thought about putting it on my stack, but a few just eked ahead of it. Now you said you have some hot takes about like what is considered a quality divorce movie. Is there like any elements in this movie that you can like break down that helps your, like your criteria, I guess, Tori. Okay. My biggest form, I hate when they um, get back together in the end. I think that's the most bullshit ending to any divorce plot. Um, And it's a very bad way to make a happy ending, but I think Kramer versus Kramer still made a happy ending without that bullshit, uh, like lazy cop out ending. Um, I won't spoil oh. it, but it's... it felt amicable. Yes, it just felt like communication was made, and that was the biggest arc that brought us to the end of the story. And I think that's the like the thing that kind of surprised me about it. It didn't take the stereotypical like divorce route, and that's kind of why I like another film from 2019. 
but I don't know if we're going to be talking about that one later. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we will. Nice. Tori, I did want to ask you, so um, with that in mind, is there any context in which, in a, within a divorce film where the couple in question, if at the end they do get back together, is there any context where that could be applied, where that would be like considered like, okay, like you, you could get on board with this? Or is it kind of like for you at least like universally like a no-no? I mean, I'm definitely a pessimist, but if I, I haven't seen a film that's done that and I've been like, oh, that makes sense. But I mean, maybe you could uh, convince me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we shall see. I haven't seen this movie. Chris, have you seen this movie? No. No, I haven't. Um, I only I'll always heard about it. Yeah. Same Brandon here. has recommended this to me since like sophomore year. Um, but you know, maybe sometime I'll give it a watch. All I can Better. think about is Kramer versus Kramer is just Kramer from Seinfeld, like fighting a clone of himself. That's all. I think about. <laughs> that's li- that's literally what I think too. Yeah. What this? Another Kramer? Oh my god! It's another Kramer. Well, we gotta duke it out. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. But I want to check this movie out. <laughs> all right. Both behind Great. The and they, just... <laughs> <laughs> they both come through different doors. Jerry, what? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. Classic pick to kick off the podcast. Brandon, take us into your first pick, buddy. Mine's more of a modern pick. A film mm. that we saw in Film Theory, 2011's A Separation. Double stack! Woo! Double stack. Yeah. Tell us about it. You like that movie? Oh, I, I this, like this movie, movie is, yeah, it's a great film. Uh, this is like one of the best divorce films I've ever seen, mar- partially because like I just wasn't expecting how deep it could go. Because like with most of Morse movies, it's like a very standard like custody battle between kids, or or like kind of them trying to find counseling until they can't do anything about it and they just fall apart. Uh, and this movie, it's. It's much less about the fact that they don't love each other and more about the fact of the situation that is permitted to them affects how um, how they live their life going forward. Like the, the main conflict of the movie is between the mom who wants to go to America with the daughter and the dad who is like stuck with his uh, his parent uh with uh, like alzheimer's and they have to decide whether or not they go to the land of opportunity uh or stay in iran which is very it it really is debilitating for women to grow up in that environment as well as live in that environment so it's like it's we're operating on a number of levels to like communicate things about culture as well as things about being a woman or being a man married in iran and it's so good and fascinating. There's a bunch of twists and turns in it, and that dialogue, ooh, so sharp. Ooh. It's a t- it's a tight script. And what I love about this movie is yes, you have this um, this clash between the parents going on in the film and deciding what's best for them and their child. But at the same time, there's another uh, clash coming from a third party that's affecting the father. So the mother and father sort of have to like. I wouldn't necessarily team up, but for the sake of their daughter, they have to come together to help solve this problem while they're also doing these problems. And that third party, there's a bunch of twists and turns in that as well. That also you have to like weigh out some like moral, morally morally am, morally ambiguous, ambiguous. Jeez, ambiguous. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's such an investing movie. Um, you're just your eyes are glued to the screen. You don't know like you get really invested by these characters with the setup and uh, the like. The divorce plot is basically what starts out the movie. Like I think isn't the first scene like in the courtroom with the judge? Right. I know in Iran, right? Like, they're, the courts are different. Like it's just it's just two people and a judge, but it starts there. The civil courts so you, are. You different know it's going to be yeah. a divorce movie from the first minute, but then it's just like it takes off and just there's all these twists and turns. But yeah. I really suggest people check out this movie. It's a good one. What do you get? Chris, Tori, any thoughts? So 
I was absent from class the day that we watched this for... Was it Film Theory that we watched this in? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I was absent from class that day. I think I was working on set. But this was, like, you know, Asghar Fahadi's, like... I've only ever heard good things about this director. Um, A Separation is, like, definitely one of those films that, like, has, like, passed me and, like, has, like, gone past me, um, you know, just, like, as I've, like, grown as a, you know, as a film goer. Um, I remember when I first heard about this movie, Brandon, I would confuse it for for whatever reason. I confused it a lot with Kiristami's (laughs) close-up. They have nothing to do with each other. They're nothing alike. (laughs) I I don't know. Wow. I I think I was just kind of like, oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean, like, um, I've only ever heard good things about this movie. And every time I've heard it, it's like, people always tell me, like, this is, like, a really great, like, exploration of divorce, companionship, friendship, and, like, the ins and outs of that, especially when you take into account the presence of a child within a divorce. Um. But yeah, I mean, like, I'm excited to see it one day. It, it just I haven't gotten around to it. It's so gripping, Chris. It's also not necessarily a young child in this movie. Like, yeah, she's able adolescent. to, like, take her own stance and make her own decisions in the film, which makes it all the more difficult, you know? Tori, have you heard of this movie? I Have you seen it or not? I haven't seen it. It's been sitting in my watch list for a long-ass time. Um, but no, just hearing now that the kid is, like, old enough to like make their own decisions there's different laws based on how old you are when your parents go through it so it's kind of cool to see like okay well is it a kid with agency is it a kid that the parents are still making the decision for him um Mm -hmm. and she's like 12 or 13 sorry go ahead yeah but still mature (laughs) oh yeah definitely um but thematically i think um when talking about divorce films sometimes and i I think it's in Kramer versus Kramer, and it sounds like it's in this, based on what I've heard, where it's it's a decision of, well, do you want to choose a choice for your love for someone else, for your husband, for your kid, or is it, do you love yourself enough to make a decision for your own happiness? Yeah. Oh, that's a great way to sum it up. All right. So a separation. So that was both Brandon and I's uh, double stack, our first film. So... Chris, we'll take it to you, bud. What's your first divorce movie? All right. Well, I may as well get this one out of the way first because it is the one that I think we all expect each other to pick. <laughs> um, I think we all... Ethan's already writing his notes. He already knows what it is. <laughs> it's a 2019 film directed by Noah Baumbach. It's Marriage Story. Now... Uh-oh. Triple stack. We all have it. Wait, was that, was that... Wait, <laughs> no. wait, Tori, did you not think I was going to no, pick I that? No, I knew you would, and that's why I didn't pick <laughs> Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, um, just to break it down, basically the story is of um, to, uh, these two, this, uh, this couple, uh, Charlie and Nicole, and uh, played by the amazing Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, as they navigate their way through a crumbling marriage on, and through a divorce alongside their child. And um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, like, I've never really been like cognizant of like divorce films as a subgenre up until I saw this film. I knew they existed, but I never really thought of them as like, oh wait, here's like a big list of of divorce films, and this film really made me aware of that. Um, one thing that I really appreciate about this film, especially as someone who like obviously like um, is not very familiar with this subgenre, and also um, my parents are still together is that they really like do a great job i think at least in my perspective of showing this progression and like connection between these two people um you start off the film under like seeing the things they love about each other but then you also start to understand like what kind of like the kind of like personality traits or other such things that drove their marriage apart um and it's a very emotionally captivating film and I don't know about you. I heard a lot of people saying they didn't feel like this was a realistic, like, couple. But, like, for me, whenever they argued, I feel like I've heard my parents argue like it before. And, like, there's something very raw and organic about this uh, movie. And, like, I always felt, like, very in their world. And I felt every beat of emotion alongside these characters. Whether that's the sadness and depression post, like, throughout the divorce or the sense of mixed emotion confusion fear anxiety fear about your child and no i think this is a really great you know exemplification of that 
Um, I think we all do like this film to some extent. I mean, like, Ethan, what do you think? Yeah, I thought this was a great film. Uh, I remember seeing it back home. I remember my parents wanted to watch it with me, and I kind of just, like, watched it before them because, I don't know, it seemed it seemed weird to watch a divorce movie Are you with trying to parents. tell me something, Mom and Dad? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> so I watched it on my own, and I thought it was a great film. Um, yeah, incredibly realistic and it's it's a it's a nice thing to see from bomb back um i'll get um maybe i'll get into it later but how there's admire like really admiring things from both uh parents you know and both of them have like their own their own issues and their own but you don't you both see them as like rather good people i guess i don't know you feel free to disagree with me but um and it was just it was just also nice to see their relationships with their son and stuff like that and uh the performances are great i mean laura dern in this movie like obviously she would should have won that academy award she did so that was great um yeah i love this movie <laughs> anyone else <laughs> yeah i'll go right. before the door <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> uh i really enjoy baron's story because it like it also humanizes the couple i think there are a lot of lines you can draw between kramer versus kramer and marriage story even like 40 years later or is it 50 now no it's 41 okay 41 um, 41 uh <laughs> i j- I remember just being like really captivated by the movie and like like Chris said the beginning of the movie where they talk about the reasons why they love each other and how over the course of the movie you see that relationship kind of deteriorate because of like the fact that couples counseling isn't work. I think what this movie is actually best at is portraying what like divorce lawyers and attorneys are like and how cutthroat they can be and how they don't really pay attention to like the feelings of the people involved and if they do they kind of manipulate their clients into doing something that they may not be comfortable with and like that's the aspect of the movie that is so original and unique that i i think stands out and that's why i think laura dern won that academy award and why ray Liotta should at least have been considered because i don't think he was but like both of those roles like very cutthroat um the last thing that i wanted to say about the movie was how a lot of people kind of shit on the performances of the lead actors because of the one scene uh in the apartment near the end where he the mickey mouse scene yeah the mickey mouse scene. not because of... <laughs> it wasn't just because of that I-, I heard a lot of people on film twitter and from our even our class in film school say like that they were overacting but like if you look at the rest of the movie it's amazing how nuanced their performances are and how bombach frames their characters especially with the camera. Uh, I don't know who the cinematographer is for this movie, but they did a great job at communicating that. So, yeah. Definitely. I'm very attached to the visual style, which uh, Chris and I both know. Um, We pulled a lot of stills from this movie um, for our own references. Um, It's just very good at, um, like, doing a visual sense of isolation. Um both with framing and with color somehow. I really like the yellows when we were in the courthouse. And um, there's just, and I mean, against the thought that their performances were overacted, there's this great shot just sitting on Scarlett Johansson as she's rehearsing her lines for um, when they're in court. And it's like, I love that shot. It's just like two minutes of her answering questions and it's amazing. Um, and then to what Ethan said, it's flawed characters in like the best way possible. They feel like real breathing people. Um, and it doesn't make me dislike them. It makes me understand them, if anything. Um, and then the last, about, like, how we're, I think, compared to Kramer versus Kramer, it's more of a legal standpoint of divorce, where Kramer versus Kramer is more emotional. Um, and seeing these lawyers just being so hard on each other, it makes it feel transactional instead of, um, really the weight of a relationship coming to an end and, um, where Kramer versus Kramer focuses more on like maybe the emotional trauma of Billy the kid. Oh, Billy the kid. Uh, Billy, uh, their child. um, (laughs) 
<laughs> Focus is more. Mom, Dad, you know, why you do, why are you splitting up? <laughs> Mom, come on. <laughs> it's like a little cowboy. <laughs> It's Yeehaw it's Billy the Kid. <laughs> it's Billy the Kid from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think as a smaller kid. <laughs> this just um puts more of a point on the emotional trauma of the parents, which is something I never thought about with my own family until I had watched this movie. Um, like the final shot of the three of them is just incredible. I want that framed on my wall. Oh yeah. Do it. Beautiful. beautiful There's a beautiful darkness ending. to it. There's a starkness to it, like like you said with the coloring, like the yellows and the whites. Like they play a lot with that, like being in a corporate kind of boardroom. There's lots of emptiness to it. I mean, you're you're in two big cities, and that's what you're gonna get. Like large on the like the facades of those cities is like beautiful and large, but like inside, it can kind of feel empty and make you feel small. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, there we go. Another another classic divorce movie, all in the first round. Uh, Tori, kick us off into the yes. second round with your next pick. All right. Um, so you guys have all seen this because you took a class on this director. I think you know where I'm headed. Um, I oh. think this is the one that Ethan likes the most of this filmography. Ka- Karen uh, Kusama? Like... Just kidding. <laughs> no, fuck off. It's... <laughs> 2001 movie Jennifer's by Wes body. Anderson. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> no, it's Aeon Flux. Oh, shit! Uh, Kangaroo Jack. Woo! Alright. There he is happening. No! I'm... <laughs> it's the Royal Ten of Bombs. <laughs> oh. Nice. Great pick. Great pick. Um, yeah, it's my favorite Wes Anderson movie. I think it was enough of Andersonisms before it got like turned into a gimmick um with still like a really solid story crazy family dynamic that i feel like i can relate to because it's like okay who's gonna explain this family to everyone um yeah i just i really enjoy watching this i feel i don't think i've ever watched this without crying at the end oh yeah you guys think it's it's not my favorite but i do really like this movie like it's one of those clear divorce movies but it's in the later years you know it's not an in the moment divorce like when you meet these characters uh the character royal tenenbaum has been alone for a while but you get sort of the the destruction of this family relationship is sort of implied at the beginning you know you know that something's wrong and then you get the whole movie of royal trying to in his way trying to repair it by doing his schemes and such like that but yeah you get lots of great moments with him and the kids um him and uh, angelica houston and uh him and uh danny glover something you know the classic rivalry with the you, you sort of see the wife's boyfriend a lot in these divorce movies at least i think in most of mine yeah most of mine you'll you'll see that sort of uh plot of contention there or um and yeah it's just you see how this one event of a divorce can sort of ripple into many other problems not really problems just uh situations and dynamics that these characters have with each other you know um and it's yeah it's a very beautiful movie about like what it is uh to not be perfect, you know, in a family. And I love it. Brandon, you're dancing. Are you listening to some <laughs> some Wes Anderson 60s rock? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Oh. I'm not a uh, I'm not any of his characters in any movie. One of my favorite uh Anderson movies is Royal Tenenbaums. That that movie, I don't think it is necessarily about divorce. I think it plays with the ideas of divorce, like, and how, like, somebody can want to reattach themselves to a family after they've kind of lost it. But for the most part, I find this to be the story about, like, the children growing into their... how they repair their relationship with their father, not because of the divorce, but because of the asshole that their father is. And this is one of Gene Hackman's last good if not great performances um but yeah i mean 
it's a good movie. I just don't know there's a lot to say about it on divorce, from my perspective anyway. All right, but I like right. it. Chris? This is definitely like, I think maybe this is probably like the most middle of the road, maybe leaning a little bit towards like the higher end on my ranking of Anderson films. Um, I do. I did always feel as though like the, te- like the Royal Tenenbaums, like for whatever problems I might have with the film, it does, I think it does a very good job at depicting like the ways in which like, you know, a family like deals with a divorce, um, particularly of course, from the perspective of the children. Um, I remember like when I, when we saw this movie in Desser's class, shout out to David Desser. Um, (laughs) I immediately got the urge to call my mom and dad and my, the rest of my siblings just to say hi. And I think like the movie does a really great job at like, um, you know, like bringing out all of these different emotions, like the, the movie, the content of the film is very dark and very heavy handed, but is presented in like this kind of bizarrely joyous and like kind of loose and like fun loving way. Um, and, um, yeah, I did. I remember we briefly talked about like directors that are able to do that in like previous episodes. And I think Anderson is one of them for sure. Um, you know, ones that are able to bring out deep seated like trauma through like lightheartedness. And yeah, I have a lot of respect for Anderson for being able to do that for, regardless of whatever qualms I might have with his filmography. All right. Yeah. Great, great pick, Tori. Uh, Brandon. Take us in the number two. Ah, uh, number two. The way I constructed my list, I forgot to mention it, was pre-divorce, during divorce, after divorce. And the first movie was very much a pre-divorce film. Like, they hadn't really done it yet. They were still deciding. But the second film, Divorce, is very much happening. And it's a film from the 1990s. It's a comedy starring Robin Williams. It's Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I completely forgot this movie existed um, before looking up divorce movies. And I don't know why, because it was such a staple of my childhood just to watch that movie. Um, But this movie is like somewhat magical. It's it's weird to call a divorce movie magical. But when you have a character actor like Robin Williams be able to like play this dad who... Uh, just wants to reunite with his kids and have cus- a little bit of custody for them. It's kind of beautiful the way it, it like transpire it transpires over the course of the movie because yes, it's a little creepy. Yes, it goes a little too far, but there's there's some genuine heart to like going that far to be with your kids. And not only that, but the film is really funny. It, it has a lot of good slapstick humor. It's a great movie for kids and families alike even if they are divorced. And I feel like it probably got put on in a lot of divorced uh, children's households at some point. But yeah, really enjoyed it. So yeah. Tori, were you one of those households? Yeah, I just want to say you are incorrect. (laughs) 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 No, we watched, (laughs) what did we watch? We watched like shit movies like Jackass 3D. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I just looked up my review on Letterboxd thinking I was find some I would find something like insightful and I just wrote I wish Robin Williams was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I think divorce stories are very closely related to um I guess it's in the same umbrella but like child custody stories and maybe your perceived right to have your child with you as you grow up um or your responsibility as a parent to those children. Um and yeah, I think this is just a story of like very very intense love for your children and that doesn't mean that you need to still be in love with your wife but it means that like even life-changing things things are that are gonna just throw you down in the gutter you still love your kids and you give your fucking life to be with them throughout the whole thing Mm -hmm. oh i need to see this i haven't seen it yet i love robin williams and somehow this one just slipped what is wrong with you i don't know i i gotta watch it you know what it's on hbo max i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a shot i Give it a shot. Of course, I'm, yeah, I'm going to watch it, okay? I don't know why I haven't seen it yet. I love Arm Williams. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I'm being backed into a corner here. It's, Brand's throwing shit at me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> Chris, save me. What do you think about this movie? 
Yeah, I remember seeing this movie with my family when I was a kid. Um, this is a, a, a just such a fun, but like still like very heartwarming movie. Um, you know, it's like quintessential Robin Williams. Like I just love everything he does in this film. Um, you know, for all of like the fun humor and everything about like, you know, this guy going so far out of his way to see his children that he's willing to disguise himself as an English nanny. You know, that's already like ridiculous in and of itself. But there's also like this really sweet underlying story about like, you know, what you're willing to do for your family and like, you know, trying to preserve the love that you have for your kids and hopefully the feeling of having them reciprocate that back. That's a very heartwarming thing. And like, you know, parents and like, you know, family, they do everything they can to like try and like, um, you know, maintain a strong relationship with their kids. And obviously going through a divorce is something that can be very difficult um, for that process. But it's a very heartwarming movie. And I think it's, yeah, just wonderful. I do got to butt in and say, I watched uh, this movie on Netflix called Disclosure earlier this week. It's about um, trans representation in the media. And, you know, we all say trans rights like uh, Jar Jar Binks does. Um, there we go. Look, sounds But great. something they brought up is that almost like a write-up passage for a lot of male comedians is to dress like a woman for the sake of comedy. And it uh, especially happens yeah. to black comedians. But in this case, it's like Robin Williams gets to do it with ease, but uh, a lot of actual trans women don't. And it's, uh, right. it's a strange phenomenon that this happens like so often. And we have stuff like... Wait, in Norbit does he cross dress? Or no? In what? What's her name? Miss Medea. In Medea? Who's that yeah. woman? <laughs> That's Tyler Perry. It's like a You're genre. Right. It's a bunch of comedians dressing up as women. White chicks. White Classic. chicks. <laughs> yeah. That should be your next. That's star. true. That's comedians should... dressing as women. Yes. Good trans rights. Like <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I get for recording with no AC. Um, all right. So, going off of Brandon's, I feel like I feel like my next pick is pretty similar to yours. Uh, it's it's a '90s comedy, but in this time starring Jim Carrey as opposed to Robin Williams, and that's Liar Liar, 1997's Liar Liar. Now, I think this is another great movie about. Uh, willing to do anything for your kids but it's sort of uh learning that message the hard way with jim carrey like you know from the very get-go he loves his son and his son loves him but um this is after like right after the the divorce um, with jim carrey and his uh wife i forgot the actress's name but um jim carrey is a lawyer in this movie and he's always busy and the son uh and he always makes excuses about why he can't see his son and stuff like that. So the son wishes that uh, he wishes his dad just couldn't lie for one day. So the whole movie is about Jim Carrey having oh was about <laughs> Jim Carrey having to deal with um, not being able to lie and like how that affects his job as a lawyer. Which I don't know. You could st- you could kind of see that stuff that we talked about in marriage story, you know, now you see the lawyer at the other, like having to deal with the problems that those characters dealt with, you know? Um, and just him coming to terms with like how about being a good father and being there for his son, even, um, after, um, this situation. And it's a really, I, I think this movie is pretty funny. It's, it's uh, it's not Jim Carrey's best movie, but I think he delivers a great performance. And yeah, liar, liar. That's my second pick. Anybody seen this movie? Anybody? 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 Brandon? No. Doris no. says no. Chris? I've heard of this movie. Good. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All I'm right. Looking at the poster, he's in the most oversized suit I've ever seen. <laughs> I know. He's supposed That's to be just like Jim a tiny Carrick. little man in a big suit. They they do play off a lot of the big time lawyer stuff with Jim Carrey, like going over the top with it. So I think it's a, it's a fun time. It's a fun time. All right, Chris, take us into your number two. All right, I am very happy that I can finally talk about this movie on this podcast. I adore this movie, and I've fallen in love with it 
every time I watch it, rewatch it, and just Final. study this film. Eh, we'll um, I have. Yeah. All right. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> just stop. Get him out of here. All right, Tori. <laughs> no, just get it. All right, Chris, ahead, Chris. Hit us with okay. it. Okay. I think this is one of this is definitely in my top twenty five of all time. Brandon gave this five stars, Ethan four and a half, and Tori you gave it a four. This is a film from twenty thirteen, directed by Spike Jones. It is her. Oh. Now I, I absolutely, forgot that was a divorce movie. Exactly. I thought I almost forgot it too. But yeah, I mean like um okay, so how do I tell this tell what this uh, movie's about? So um, this movie takes place in the not so distant future where we have a character played by Joaquin Phoenix named Theodore Trombley. He is a, um, a lonely like letter writer and, um, it, and he eventually purchases a, um, you know, highly intelligent operating system for his computer. Um, and this operating system is sentient and is able to communicate with him. And he is in the midst of a divorce at the time when he purchases this. And he falls in love with his computer. And there's, like, this big, like, you know, there's all this, like, talk about the AI implications of that and, like, the philosophical um, understandings of love and the extent at which humans can feel emotion. But um, all of that is played on the backbone of his relationship in the film with his real-life... Um, Fiance, or I think they might have been, they might have actually been married recently, Rooney, played by Rooney Mara. And yeah, I think this is an absolutely gorgeous film. Like, you really get this sense of like this individual who is going through this deep seated, like, um, and very painful time of time in his life and his search for companionship as a result of that. Um, I am just, I just fall in love with this movie every time I watch it. Like, there's something so human and understandable about a guy going through something like this and his desire to find someone that recaptures that sense of belonging and love and it's excitement that he had with his um, previous wife. And um, that just bizarrely, quote unquote, takes the form of an operating system. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's generally... Um, the gist of this film and like kind of I think I was able to articulate the divorce aspect of it pretty well but like I mean Brandon you gave this five stars just like I did like what do you think about it ah uh, yeah all uh, right Tori <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> I uh I remember a lot of people hating on this movie when I where I grew up because they were like he fucked a phone? What? Uh, like, that was their... That, was their that ain't thing. right! <laughs> Fucking virgins. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking simp before it happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Arizonans didn't seem to like this movie, but I kind of adored it, you know? <laughs> that should be on the poster. <laughs> 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 Arizonans didn't like Not it. very popular with Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really adored this movie in the way it, like... De deconstructed a man's psyche after a divorce uh, like royal tannenbaums i don't really think of it as a divorce movie because like it only plays such a small part but it does play into the mindset of uh theodore twombly's character as he's trying to date after he gets divorced did you just say theodore tombi twombi theodore fuck phone are you Kristen Wiig in the movie? <laughs> I, choke me with the cat. What? Yes. <laughs> so, I, I mean, there, there's some great comedy in here, but that's not to say how st uh, stark the imagery in the, this movie is. When he's in the shower and, like, contemplating things after things go awry with Samantha the OS, it's really uh, sad. <laughs> yeah. Tori? Yeah, um... Not to do it with divorce, but I like that this is a technology movie that doesn't talk down to people that use technology. I feel like that's such an easy trope to follow. We're like, oh, you're going to die because you use your cell phone too much. But uh, <laughs> I definitely, I think visually there's, the only way I know how to describe it is they use like, he's both isolated and unisolated. There's like close but not close cinematography. There's a scene Chris and I really like where it's, 
It's um, Joaquin and Rudy Mara. I think they're signing divorce papers at a, a restaurant, outdoor restaurant. Um, and it's over the shoulders. I think they're on a, what is it, a 50? <laughs> Cine Chris. I, I, I don't know. It's probably 85, but I don't know. Hoyta is too smart for me. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> well, Isn't it like handheld too? Yeah, there's some shots in that that are just handheld and just gorgeous. It's just, it's over their shoulders. They're in each other's frames, but they're not, they don't feel close to each other. They still feel separated. And um, I think that's a great way to portray a newly divorced couple where it's like, okay, yeah, you don't love each other anymore. Yeah, you're not together anymore. But, like, you still know each other, like, the back of your hand because you spent years together loving each other. And I think that was a really, really great scene in terms of portraying that. Excellently said. Yeah. It's such a... Uh, it It's a really gentle film, you know? I don't know. It... Well, now whenever I think of this movie... You, have you guys seen the Herd trailer but with Steve Rule? Yes, you show it to us. No Scarlet way, Jose. Is everything okay? I wish I could put my arms around you. I wish I could touch you. No way, Jose. <laughs> no way, Jose. I just now that I can only think of that trailer when I think of this movie. But I remember seeing this in theaters when I was a, a wee fourteen-year-old lad and really enjoying it. Um, Spike Jones has an eye for like. I think he, he's another one of those directors, like, um, similar to, I'd say, Taika Waititi, but in a different way, where it's like an energetic melancholy, sort of. A vibrant melancholy, I think I would say. And, yeah, it, it vibes with me. It vibes with me. All right. We're going into the final round here. Tori, oh, shit. start us off. Oh, Let's shit. do it. The final round. <laughs> uh, uh, the, 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 <laughs> 2010, it's a good movie. Um... Fuck, I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's really good. It's on Netflix. It's 2010 by Derek C. in France. Derek? Oh. Derek C. in France? I know him. Personally? You know him? No. Can you bring him in to the Discord? Oh. Um, no. It's a Blue Valentine. <laughs> no, I haven't seen this movie. Um, oh, I thought the movie was called 2010, so when I looked it up on Letterboxd, it came up with a sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm like, that's a divorce movie? <laughs> I was like, wow! Uh, no, it's <laughs> Blue Valentine starring yeah. our good friends uh, Jen Jones and Ryan Gosling. No, not Jen Jones. What the fuck? Michelle Williams. <laughs> Jen Jones is a grandma in this, I guess. But um, Grandma. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I watch movies and then I forget most of it. But I remember it's about divorce. <laughs> it's really good. It's um, It felt really raw. It felt really honest. It was like an Americana version of a divorce story um and it's just something that's always stuck with me and even if I don't remember the film too well <laughs> it's like I think about the name and I think about how I felt when I watched the movie and I just felt so heavy like I think I needed to take a nap after it and it was just like yeah it's a great movie it really stuck with me it's it's kind of a youthful divorce from what I hear like they're fairly young so yeah. it feels like it takes a different approach at it something that you're quite you're not quite expecting cuz most divorce movies deal with people in their middle age like 40, 50, 60 but this kind of what like mid 20s maybe Yeah, I think it kind of goes on like the high school sweetheart kind of deal where it's like you married cuz everyone else is getting married but did you really need to get married? Oh, okay. Depressing. You don't you don't see too many, yeah, too many of those young love divorce movies. You Usually see it with older people, so that's that's a unique standpoint. I gotta check this out, and I love me some Ryan Gosling and some, uh, fuck, who was that? Michelle Williams? Yeah, Michelle Williams. <laughs> He's got a pretty nice uh, mustache on in this movie. Oh yes, he good does. mustache man. <laughs> Great mustachio. Um, okay, Brandon, stop grabbing your microphone with your toes and tell us your final film. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so you don't have one. No, 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 no. <laughs> did you do the homework, Brandon? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> My last film is a 2017 film. I forget what country. I think it's French. Uh, it's it's called Custody. Hmm. And it's a post-divorce movie. And it's about um, a father trying to get custody or at least some custody from his wife for his kids. 
and the film approaches this from two different perspectives because it starts in the middle of the story so we don't know either person in this story and we at the at the beginning you are totally with the dad on every step of the way you feel like the mom is strong strong arming him for no reason and then there's this the director slowly veils back this abusive piece of shit father and this is a terrifying movie this is a movie that is like the worst case scenario for the divorce but it's also one that is very stark and like i feel like needs to be watched almost just so people like know like that sometimes people aren't in the right state of minds and that in this case like you really need it focuses on mental illness and divorce as well as like being super possessive of your significant other as well as your children and how like you almost use them as ammunition like the people in marriage story but to get custody whereas like you don't really want custody in the first place and the thing that's like amazing about it is just how gripping it is it's just like a separation and the fact that the dialogue is great but i feel like with this movie i feel like there's some actual tension between the characters and what's going on because there's a lot of subtextual stuff going on beneath the surface i recommend it to all of you because i know none of you have probably seen this movie but it's got like a 96 percent on rotten tomatoes it'll ruin your evening but in a good way does it play as a thriller at first no at first, it's like this like drama about custody, and then it slowly unveils this thriller kind of horror aspect to it that you're like not quite expecting. But it plays well into the movie. Like it doesn't feel like it's two different movies. Right. It just it it plays with your expectations and then subverts them like halfway through. That sounds interesting. Scary. Interesting. It does sound scary. Well, it's on Amazon Prime and Canopy, so yeah, check it out. No we should all we should all check it out. No excuse. Okay, so for my final film, I mentioned earlier that um, about Noah Baumbach and his and the way he depicts characters in Marriage Story being a bit different. Um, my final film is another Baumbach divorce movie. Jesus, guy, come on, <laughs> get over get it. it no, together. Get it together. Get it. Get it together. <laughs> no, but this is this is instead of because Marriage Story was about his experience being divorced. This is one um, about his, his parents' divorce, and that's The Squid and the Whale from 2005. Now, this this is a v- very irritating movie. Like, but I think that's the point, you know? Uh, a lot of these characters are very uh, pretentious, like Jesse Eisenberg's in it, uh, and that's all I need to say. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, Jeff, oh, why am I? I am shitting the bed on names today. Jeff Holy Daniels? shit! Jeff Daniels, yes, Jesus. Isn't like Laura? He plays a college. Lenny and isn't Lori? Yeah, Laura, Laura Lenny, and Jeff Daniels are the parents that are getting divorced in this movie, and where you see a lot there's a lot of optimism in a in a rather uh, upsetting situation in marriage story you know in a rather tr- uh rupture this is just like who who do i like even in the kids who do i like uh follow in this you know like every like it just shows how um a divorce can like really show sometimes show the worst in people um you see it you see it beforehand with them, like, there's this really hilarious scene. Um, so it's Jeff Daniels and Laura Linney, and then two sons. One's Jesse Eisenberg, and the other is uh, Owen Klein, I think. I don't know. He, he has not been in any movies. But um, they're playing doubles tennis together. And this really, like, this is, like, the only scene that I really identified with because I do this with my family, like, um where me and my dad would be on a team, my sister and my mom, and um, Jesse Eisenberg and Jeff Daniels are on a team, and uh, sometimes you'll, they'll just like, this is like the slow, like you're, you're like, uh-oh, something's up, because you'll just see the slow jabs between Laura Linney and Jeff Daniels, like the, just the subtle stuff that you know hurts, and you're just like, oh, it's hard, it's hard to sit through, but it's, it's, it's hard for me to like really love this movie by the like how pretentious 
Noah Baumbach makes all these characters seem, you know? But half of me believes that that's somewhat the point. So, yeah, that's why I chose this movie, The Squid and the Whale. Has anyone seen this movie? Nah, son. Nah? Definitely My dad not. has it on DVD. Why? Sorry, Chris. <laughs> why does your dad have it on DVD? Is he planning something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't want to He's talk had it for a while. <laughs> He's had it for a while, but He's yeah, I just I think he likes I just think he likes the the movie, but I don't know. Good. Well, I think you guys should all check check it out because it, it, technically it's kind of like a prequel to Marriage Story because oh. Jesse Eisenberg is supposed to be the Noah Baumbach Adam Driver character, even though it's different like different names and stuff like that. It's supposed to sort of really it be about his life. So he's like ugly Maybe, Adam Driver. He is. Technically, you're wrong. What? Me? <laughs> what? Who's wrong? <laughs> that Jesse Eigenberg is the ugly Adam Driver? Well, technically, Tori, you're wrong. Everyone knows that that's not true. Yeah, what's the science? <laughs> <laughs> it's that's Jesse that's the science right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. No, there we don't go. Chris, sorry about that. Chris. Take us into the last divorce movie in our divorce movie stacked episode. All right. So. Um, I was like doing my best, like to, um, like when I was constructing my stack, I wanted to like throw in like some films that like technically aren't divorce films, but they're about like the decline and death of a marriage, but the divorce doesn't actually happen. But I know like Tori was pretty explicit that the marriage, the divorce has to happen itself. So I decided to not go with that. Um, I had thought about doing either The Shining or Gone Girl. Because I think those both like are very good at um, depicting Whoa. like the decline and death of a marriage, I but because I know too. we want, yeah. But I decided to kind of just keep it keep it clean this episode. But shout out to those two movies. Um, and Night at the this, Museum. And yeah, Night at the shout Museum is also there too. <laughs> and to the Munion by Christopher Claus. Walken. <laughs> and uh, the Santa Claus. Oh. And Ant Man. Yes. Ant Man. Oh, <laughs> I I was so close to putting Ant Man on this list, but I like. I, I gotta save that. I gotta <laughs> save for a for a really big episode where I know Ant Man could get on the final stack. <laughs> Never gonna happen. I, I I don't think it would have gotten like on this shrinking one. movies. I don't know. <laughs> okay, movies about shrinking men. No. Okay, Chris, tell us about what's your last. So movie? the the movie I ended up going with is a 2006 film directed by I think I might butcher this person's name, Gabrielle Mutino. I don't know how to pronounce that. Gabriele <laughs> Mutino. Um, yeah, it's this like movie that. starring Will Smith and his son, Jaden Smith. No. It oh. is The Pursuit of Happiness. Yes! I, I adore that. this movie. I, Brandon, you have, Brandon, I've been recommending you this movie. Okay, you know what? Here's what we're going to do sometime, Brandon. You're going to watch Pursuit of Happiness. I'm going to watch A Separation and we're both going to cry. In each other's uh... arms. <laughs> Can I okay. can I watch Brandon watch the movie and be like, what are you doing? Why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> like you did with me and <laughs> fucking Life Aquatic. Chris, tell us about um, Pursuit of Happiness. Okay. I'm a big Will so Smith Pursuit fan, of, so. Yeah, so Pursuit of Happiness, I really love this movie. It is basically a story about um, this guy, this down-on-his-luck um, guy played by Will Smith, and he and his wife had just, uh, gotten a divorce they are very much estranged from one another they really the only connection they have to each other now is uh the shared custody of their son uh played by jaden smith which by the way this is jaden smith's best performance in a movie granted he does music now but he does a great <laughs> job here um but no he like this is a wonderful movie about like a father trying to give his son the life that he never could he never could have had for himself and like um it's all motivated by this sense of like determination and love and desire to um rekindle a friendship and relationship with his son that had been damaged by a by this like tragic divorce um you know and like it's a very heartwarming and heart-wrenching film there's a scene in this film where um Will Smith and Jane Smith are in a bathroom and they're homeless at this point in the story and just watching them like 
try and navigate through um, a broken father and son relationship is absolutely heart heart wrenching for me. Like every time I see this movie, all I can think about is I want to call my dad and I want to take him out for noodles and I want to hang out with him. And like, you know, it's like this movie like means a lot to like me because like it's it is the movie that I think of um, my dad most when I watch and like, um, you know, kind of like I suppose in a similar way to like how Tori expressed like how she kind of like sees um, Robin Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire as like I wish this were my dad, <laughs> but like for me, Will Smith is my dad in this what the that was a weird sentence he is <laughs> will smith is my dad. my dad but he's black Wait, um, that's so, the one problem. someone had to say it <laughs> yeah someone had to say it i guess but yeah i mean like i adore this film brandon i don't think you've seen it ethan have you seen this movie i know tori no. has tori tell us what do you think i have i can't believe i didn't think of this movie it's such a good movie it's a it's a bay area movie isn't it Yes, it is a San Francisco based oh, film. Oh, the Bay! Paul. Wait, is it San Francisco or is it Oakland? No, it's San Francisco because they go by that uh, the, that big building. You know the one? North Bay. The big uh, <laughs> deal, triangle building. The, uh, it's in Sonic San the Hedgehog. Building. The Golden Gate Building. Um, the yeah. Golden Gate Building. <laughs> the one in Mission Impossible 4. But I just, I remember and the scenes felt like almost improvised in a lot of cases or just very real. Um, it, I think it's because they were related, and I don't know why I didn't like put that together, that that was an awesome casting choice until now. Um, but beyond it being just about like family and divorce, it's a very, I want to say, like political movie where it talks about like social status, and um, I think there's a lot of the black experience put into this movie, and yeah, I remember this really resonating with me when I watched it. Two things. One, excellent casting choice even though I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> is this really uh, in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I heard it was a very depressing film, so I haven't watched it. But I think Will Smith could probably relate to that movie right now, probably, because of what's going on with him and his wife right now. Uh, also, two, Chris. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> You're saying that he's related to himself in the movie that he's in? <laughs> <laughs> you know right now will smith maybe right now, i know he's <laughs> i know he's going through a hard time and i bet he's watching pursuit of happiness like, that's me right I like now the idea. he's at home and he's like oh my god i gotta put this dvd in <laughs> yeah kind of kind of and number two popcorn number in one two, hand chris. ice cream in the other chris number two yes what's up when i went over to your house on what was it was it the Sunday? Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Uh-huh. When we had our marathon. Uh, yeah. I, I had that travel pack of movies and Pursuit of uh-huh. Happiness was in there. And I'm like, I know if I bring this movie, Chris is going to want to watch it. So I was like, fuck <laughs> it. I'm taking it out. So I took it out because I was you like, I'm, bastard. I didn't want to be so depressed good. on Sunday. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I had to say. That would have been a weird movie to watch after Communion. <laughs> instead of yeah instead we watched the fucking mario brothers movie hey everybody's got tap water that's all i gotta say i can't wait oh, until man. we can talk about the babysitter on this podcast okay i can wait okay i can wait, I can wait too <laughs> i saw it too i can wait all right. as well <laughs> all right so uh who's kicking brandon that's... out of the discord <laughs> Yep, all right, time to be on the Discord. No, before we do that, before we kick Brandon out, let's run down our films and then get to the decision of making our quintessential stack. So, Tori, kick us off with your three divorce movies. All right. Uh, our first right. movie, Kramer vs. Kramer, 1979. I think it's the OG divorce movie. It's first marriage story. Uh, number two, Royal Tenenbaums. Uh... Wes Anderson, Homie G, uh, and 2010's Blue Valentine. Brandon, what's your three movies? Ah, my three movies are A Separation, <laughs> uh, Custody, and Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, and my three movies <laughs> are A Separation, Double Stack, Liar Liar, 
and the squid and the whale. Chris. All right. So my three films are Marriage Story, Her, and The Pursuit of Happiness. All right. And those are our films. So let's get to it. Does anybody have any pitches for a stack? I have a pitch. Does anybody have any ideas? All right, Chris, hit it. Okay. So I think a separation, obviously, the double stack has to make it. Um, and Tori, I think Tori's strongest pick. Granted, I haven't seen this film yet, but Brandon himself said Kramer versus Kramer is quintessential divorce cinema. Um, so that's on there, I think, as well. And I think I would put Mary's Story on here, but it is kind of like the, like the you know the follow up to Kramer. So I'm like I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna put that aside for this one. I would like to put in her. I think it's a very contemporary piece on love and relations. And I think the divorce aspect with Rooney Mara is beautiful. I disagree. (gasps) (gasps) Insert larva scream. (laughs) (laughs) She told, she stole my disagree. I I saw it coming as I'm not going to let him have it. (laughs) I double disagree. Uh, uh, yeah, I like the first two choices. Same. I think we can make a deal where we we put mm. something, either something funny on the list or Pursuit of Happiness. How did you read my mind, Brandon? I don't know. We're connected. <laughs> well, I, I feel like, Chris, you have like a very good stack of movies, so I feel like one of your movies should be in there. Did you have Missed Outfire or did someone else? Because that one no, that's no, Brandon. Brandon did. You can put mine. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Oh, no. thanks. Thank, thanks, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire is a great film. Uh, I think a very accessible movie. Family. All right. You know, I think... Fun. Let's see. We got... I, I wouldn't mind her, but I think you're right. We got to have something a little bit more lighthearted in here, you know? I feel like, do we just want people to just like cry for six hours straight? Is that what we want to do? Because I would be fine putting Pursuit of Happiness in there if we, we wanted to do that. We did pick divorce movies. This was an <laughs> That's true. Wasn't. But do you Listen. want to depress your viewer? Do you want something more heartwarming and light? Well, how do you how do you want the viewer to feel about divorce, Tori? Oh, it's <laughs> do you the want best to just thing be straight sadness. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think. Well, okay. Tell me if I'm remembering it wrong, Chris, but. Pursuit of Happiness, yeah, it's sad at times, but I remember not feeling like awful when it ended. I felt like no, you were like very uplifted being, like, by the time. The end. The, yeah, you're very uplifted by the end of the film because like the arc goes there, and there is like a good bit of comedy between um, Jaden and Will. You know, the very father son pokey fun at each other kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I would be on board with having that. I really do love that movie, so. Yeah, it's a hard movie, but it's still a Will Smith movie. So yeah, you're still going to have a bit of fun at some point. And I do okay. think that's a good final movie to end on. I'm I'm down to put that on. I really want to see it. Brand's got a little stink, yeah, stink face smizing. right now, but his eyes are I don't think I don't think that man will ever be satisfied unless we pick all three of his films. So uh, I don't think he'll no. ever be satisfied until we pick all three of his films or I finally get a shutout. I don't think he'll ever be satisfied, period. <laughs> Chris Chris likes to do this thing where he gets upset that he doesn't that he almost gets shut out and then we put a movie on the list to make him not upset. Yeah, he's very talented. Why are you shooting on him for it? He's very convincing. I stay <laughs> at the top of the game. Huh? <laughs> this, this is, is how, how I win. <laughs> Chris Wait, just I wants... almost put Uncut Gems in as a divorce movie. Oh, <laughs> oh last minute. <laughs> that would have been so good. Like, yeah, let's just watch Uncut Gems three times. Okay, there's the stack. No, I yes, I think Pursuit of Happiness is the way to go. Are we all in agreement here? So yeah, is that our order? What about? I think, I think it's a good order. Kramer versus Kramer because that's the classic is first. You know, a separation, something a. Uh, a little, a little hidden gem, you know, and somewhat of a d- difficult, morally ambiguous film, and then another like really American icon, Will Smith, to end out the the stack with some happy but also sad. I think that's God good. Bless I think America. it's good. God, you know what? 
God bless. No. <laughs> what are we? Let's just all get really patriotic for the last few minutes of this yeah. episode. All right. But Iranian, you can't you can't just do that on the Iranian. You can't just support the Iranians. What the fuck? No, 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 no. <laughs> you idiot. That's not what I said. <laughs> Brandon. You can't. We all know where you were going. After- Arizona ass. <laughs> All right, Arizona. He's leaving. He's leaving. All right, he's gone. (laughs) While he's gone, (laughs) let's let's run down our final stack. Tori, kick us off with our quintessential divorce movie. Divorce movies. Let's go. Uh, Divorce. Divorce. Divorce movie stack. Hit it, Tori. All right, I I, I do just one? Yeah, just do the first one. Okay. Our our first movie... Is a uh, 1979 Robert Fenton starring Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep. It's Kramer versus Kramer. All right. Did I do that? And... Right? Sure. <laughs> Brandon, do our number two. All right. Our number two movie is A Separation, a great film about uh, divorce as well as moral ambiguities with how we deal with the people in our lives. Okay. Chris, finish us off. And our final film is a 2006 film directed by, and I apologize for the mispronunciation, Gabrielle Mucino. Um, It is The Pursuit of Happiness, starring Will Smith and Jaden Smith. It follows the story of a father and son as they navigate their way through both uh, financial and emotional trauma following the divorce of uh, Will Smith's character and his now uh, estranged wife. Wife. God. Life. It's a strange life. It could be as a strange life. You know? Aren't we all living in a strange life? God. Yeah. Okay, I, I know we're going long, but I just gotta say, like, who the fuck walks in a blockbuster and is like, God, I just want to fucking hate my hey, life at the hey end of tonight? <laughs> just these three movies, please. <laughs> That's why we should have chosen Mrs. Doubtfire. The clerk's like, wow, that bad, huh? He's like, yeah. <laughs> doesn't want to be shut out i'm calling him out on stack yeah i don't want to be this is, i don't want to be shut out i don't want to be shut out what a surprise it's that's, outrageous that's the name of the you're game. not going to be able to get away game. with this you're not going to be able to get away with well this. I, i've gotten away with it for 15 weeks now <laughs> so <laughs> what? it's gonna it's gonna end now it's gonna end it, w- gonna it end. will end. i i bet it will end by episode 20 yeah so well, but let's see let's see i'm yeah. gonna bring my a game all right you animals let's end this episode tori Thank you so much for coming on the show. No, wait.